It is our great pleasure at this time to welcome one who is a giant, not only in his leadership in his own conference, not only in the continent of Africa, but also in the Council of Bishops and therefore, I guess I could say worldwide. Bishop John Yambasu was elected in 2008 as the Bishop of Sierra Leone. He had served for 10 years in missions among young people, covering some 14 countries throughout Africa. He had a magnificent reputation as one who was able to accomplish the impossible. He returned to Sierra Leone as the bishop in a country that had been torn by civil war for 10 years. I myself saw the lingering effects of that horrible war. It was a matter of rebuilding a country and in many ways rebuilding the church. It was my privilege to preach at his annual conference three years ago and uh, what, what a spirit lifting experience that was. It is a joy and a privilege to have with us today Bishop Yang John Yambasu. Good morning. morning. Well, I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters across the Atlantic in Sierra Leone, West Africa. It is a joy for me to be here. The last two days has been so full of wonderful experiences, experiences that I never thought I would have. But thanks be to Bishop Jean Alan Middleton for extending an invitation to me for me to be here and to celebrate with you. I am not here to preach, but I am here to talk about what God is doing in Sierra Leone by using you people. We had 10 years of very gruesome war. And for those of you who have heard about blood diamonds, I wonder how many of you, blood diamonds, that, yeah, that movie was filmed in Sierra Leone. And those experiences after 10 years of war have left that country in a very bizarre situation where well over half a million people were killed in addition to another half a million being maimed and dismembered. But thanks be to God, the war ended in 2002, and the Sierra Leone for the last 10 years has been busy rebuilding from the ashes of war. It is a joy for me to come, and my people in Sierra Leone have said to me, Bishop, say to the people in the Susquehanna Conference, we love you. We are very grateful to God and thankful to you for joining along with us, especially during those 10 years of war, when many of our partners ceased to travel to Sierra Leone, you were still there for us. In the situations where lives we have been battered, you gave us hope. Yesterday, Bishop Middleton was talking to you about well over 150 years of partnership between this conference and the Sierra Leone Conference. A partnership that I've developed over the years, but I must say that in the last three years, we have experienced God working in our lives more than ever before as he used this initiative to bring hope to the people of Sierra Leone. We continue in that long missionary journey. We're walking in the footsteps of those of our parents and grandparents who traveled the path before. We continue to shrink the distance between us and here. 
we continue to bring the Atlantic Ocean closer together so that it becomes easier and easier every now and then for us to travel across. It's a joy to be with me, to be with you here. Bishop Middleton has been such a wonderful colleague of mine. But I think our relationship has gone beyond collegial relationship to one of sister and brother in the Lord relationship. How I wish... You people, well, you, maybe you did not understand that, but you have one of the most respectable bishops that we have in this in the, in the world. I, I have personally admired Bishop Middleton on the grounds of her sense of humility one of the most humble bishops I've ever come across. I have been in mission for well over 10 years. But my relationship in the last three to four years with Bishop Middleton have really taught me that lesson of being humble. I want to thank you, Bishop Middleton. And the people in Sierra Leone are saying to you, they are in prayers with you as you take your first step into retirement. I have seen many people retire though, but to see one retire with such grace, I think that's exemplary, Bishop. I see you here yesterday as though you were saying thank you for all that you have been to me. In, in Africa, retirement is not a fashionable thing, though. And we find that even among, you know, Christians, we just want to stay on and on and on. <laughs> but we want to thank Bishop Middleton for setting that example. How I wish a lot of us from Africa would have been here to see her smiling yesterday and saying goodbye. We, I have a number of slides that I want to show you that will just speak a little bit about what you are doing and how your relationship with the Sierra Leone Anna Conference is making a difference, is impacting lives and touching lives that would never have been touched before. I wonder if we have that on the screen. Thank you. That is a country with a 27,000 square miles, you know, 27,000 square miles with a population of about 6 million people. That is a country that has gone through 10 years of one of the most brutal wars ever fought on the continent of Africa. But the joy is that that is a country that is now beginning to rebuild from the ashes of war, a country that now comes to the point of saying never again. We want to thank you, as I've said, for all those years. We had the rebel war that started some 10 years ago. But thank God, life is improving in so many ways in the country. For those of you who have been to Sierra Leone, and if you've not been there, make sure you're there. We are a wonderful people, welcoming people, hospitable people. Bishop Middleton will tell you that and all of those colleagues and friends who have been there before. We, in the last three years of our partnership, you have helped to make sure that mission and ministry in the United Methodist Church has expanded in bounds and leaps. When I took over office as bishop in 2009, January 1, we had about 55 clergy. And out of those 55, about 30 of them only were full-time. What was the reason? Many young people were not very enthusiastic about coming to ministry because of conditions of service. But then beginning 2009, 
when, with, when the central Susquehanna, when the Susquehanna initiative came into being and we focus on payment of parcel salary, that number has increased. Today we have 186 pastors in that conference. Before I came into office, we had a total of, when 2012, 280, $280,000 that we are giving, that have been given so far in salary support alone, beginning, January, beginning 2009, of date 2012, $280,000 just in salary support alone for pastors. But, and then also, we have a total of $47,000 that we're given just for projects alone. And so in these two, three years, the total amount of cash that has gone through the system, through the General Board of Global Ministries, has gone to $607,000. But, but the fact here is, apart from the 607, there is also an addition of four to five hundred thousand dollars that never went through the system, because volunteers and mission teams that have and churches that have been partnering with us, we go physically with money to engage in church construction, in toilet, in school construction. That money did not go through the system. They took that money physically. But 106,000 is the one I'm accounting for. That's the one that we actually went through the system. So in three years' time, we have had well over a hundred thousand, a million, one million dollars going into Sierra Leone because of your passion and love for us. What has that money done? What has that money done? First of all, Today, it becomes so easy. Stationing in one, one appointment is one of those very challenging functions of a bishop. I don't know whether the same holds true with you. Before this time, the bishop would say, you go over there. They say, no, I'm not going there. No electricity, no water, no this, no salary. But I tell you what happens. Yesterday, I was listening, and uh, Bishop Middleton was going through the ordinance, going through the John Wesley's examination. And uh, he was saying, will you be obedient to the faith? And they said, yes. And I was smiling. I said, that's because they've not yet been ordained. <laughs> <laughs> Once ordination is done, where well, I'm going to send you to that place. No, Bishop, I'm not going there. <laughs> but today, Bishop and friends, I tell you what, I say to this bishop, to, I say to this pastor, you are going. And without knowing where, they already start packing. Because they know that when they go, they are sure of their salary. Lives of pastors have increased tremendously. My relationship with the pastors have also increased tremendously. Pastors are now able to take care of their families and pay school fees. Before this time, all of that burden was on the bishop. And I am here in particular to say thank you. But it is all not just about money. It is about relationships. There are people that I have met all these three years that have become more than friends. Bishop Middleton is just one of them. And I can go on to name and name and name. Fred Clark yesterday received the honor. Fred has been such a wonderful partner. And so many of them. You all go to give us hope. We need you. In addition to that, we're also building schools. What you people did yesterday... We had already done it some year, one year ago. One of the most modern schools that we are now building in Freetown, where children will walk 10 miles either way 
to come closest to the most close high school we have built one of the most modern is yet to be completed that we have already named the Bishop Middleton High School. <laughs> the school is, is not yet complete, but because of the demand for education, and the respect that the people have for United Methodist education, the people went around to force the conference to say, Bishop, you must open even if five classrooms for our children. And so we opened the school, and those are just some of the children there. We continue to be blessed also by school supplies. Almost every year we receive about five, four to five containers of school supplies. And that has really helped us. We have one of the most modern, our schools now have one of the most modern, you know, furniture, school decks and school chairs and all the rest of it in the country to the extent that, you know, other denominations come to us and say, how are you doing that? But we're doing that all because of you. We want to be very thankful to you. In addition, all the churches are also not just building schools, they are also paying school fees and buying uniforms and shoes. It's about a hundred dollars or so per year to support just a child to go through one year education. The Camp Hill United Methodist Church has done, reconstructed and rebuilt one of the most modern churches we can have. The church you see there on the right, on the left side is the old church and on the right is the new rehabilitated church. That church was totally completely destroyed during the year. People will want to worship, and it's raining, and everybody will get wet in the church. Today, you go to that place, the pews were removed because of the rebels, and they were used as firewood. Today, you want to go to Panguma, it's one of the best places of worship. A modern, completely modern, with tight floors that you want to be. And now what, I, what is happening, because of all the facilities there, pastors, before even stationing comes, appointment comes, pastors now come to me, Bishop, if you cannot send me anywhere, send me to Panguma. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just one of the joys. Can we see the next slide, please? We're also building toilet facilities. In our traditional villages, especially in those remote villages, people go into the forest to do their thing. And that's a health hazard because the pigs are grown wild, the chickens grow wild, and they go into this forest and then they feed on those and they come back into the town. And sometimes when the pigs are being cooked, they are not properly cooked and tip warm infestation becomes very rampant. So sometimes it's not just about building toilet. By just solving a social problem, you also solving a health hazard, a health challenge. And that has also helped to improve the life of people in some of those rural communities. Can we see the next slide, please? There is a hammer mill. Many rural communities, especially women, are now making life easier for themselves because of such things like the hammer mill. They grow their cassava and they bring the cassava in town and they can grind that cassava, they can pound that cassava and that cassava is used as fufu, as gari and transformed into a whole lot of different assortment of food that is sold in the market. And so that has helped to improve the life of women. Women are now able to send their school, to their children to school and pay their school fees and buy uniforms. Nothing is too small. Let's see the next slide, please. What are our needs? Many times I come and people ask, Bishop, what are really your needs? Yesterday I was talking with Pam, and Pam is saying, Bishop, we need communication. You need to talk to us. You need to send us information. One of the things that we're really looking forward to, especially we have about 10 DC superintendents, if we can equip each one of them 
with a desktop, with an internet facility, then it becomes so easy for those district superintendents to be able to connect. Many of them are working in places that's hardly accessible, and we want you to do that. We are also in need of programs, school supplies. We are in need of volunteers in missions. We just need you. Your presence can do a whole lot. We want you to experience the other side. And finally, let me once again say how I so much appreciate you. I have enjoyed every moment of my stay or lavishing hospitality. I am in a, I, I'm sleeping in one of the largest suites I have ever slept in my life. <laughs> Sometimes the first day I woke up in my room and I was saying, and I was looking around, oh, is that another room? But that's what God does. I have enjoyed every moment of my life here. And uh, there is something unique. You know, I was laughing this morning. Bishop Middleton has several qualities, but I'm discovering another quality this morning. He is the only bishop who, she's the only bishop who will make his annual conference to write and applaud at the same time. <laughs> I have never seen that. <laughs> I want to thank you so much. May God continue to bless you. And I invite you, come over to Macedonia and help us. And I hope that you, that something moved in your heart today to consider the possibility of indeed going to Sierra Leone. You will never be the same if you go.